This is Ellie. She's a 14 year old girl who can't be infected by the undead. She could be the cure to this apocalyptic plague. She could also dress better. And these are two brothers who we're traveling with and as long as the four of us stay alive, everything will be sweet. We make our way through the suburbs. I head inside a spacious four bed, two bath to do some looting, but instead I see little bro dropping game on Ellie. Young biracial love. My pants are getting tighter. I mean, I see some little puppy dogs. Wow, what great dogs. We continue forward and then a guy with a sniper rifle starts shooting at us. We're pinned down because the infected aren't the real worry, hard scoping sweats are. Fortunately, he's an appalling shot. I flank FaZe couldn't hit his wife and in the process take down several of his men. I enter the house he's perched up in and stumble across some colourful pictures some kids must have drawn before the outbreak. I don't think these deserve to be hung up on the wall. I defeat the sniper via a really cool quick time event and pick up the rifle to cover my mates. Unfortunately a Humvee rolls in and I can't help but wonder what Ellie and the gang have been doing this entire time. I've been busy securing the high ground and these clowns are still in the street crying and hitting on each other. Fortunately the driver wisely leaves his armor plated vehicle for a moment and I snipe him saving the day. Well actually some infected swarm the brothers and the little one gets bitten and that night becomes infected and we have this whole emotional ordeal where we have to shoot him and then the older brother loses his mind and puts a gun to his own head. I had no idea he was a police officer. Ellie and I continue forward. As long as the two of us stay alive, everything will be sweet. Her boyfriend might be a dead freak, but on the other hand, I find a magnum with a scope, which is pretty inventive. We stumble across a hydroelectric dam, which is easily my favorite way to generate power. There's no simple way to cross it, so Big Joel decides that despite the clear warnings not to, he'll jump into the water. 85% of this game is carrying Ellie around on floating wooden pallets so that she can climb to hard to reach places. I attempt to drown the child, but she's more protected than the Hollywood stars who visited Epstein's island. And together we overcome the various obstacles and Ellie wants a high five to celebrate. I proceed to not give her a high five because positive reinforcement makes people egotistical. We stumble across a small grave that must be for a child. There's nothing sadder than a dead child, except maybe two dead children or a grown man uploading gaming videos to the internet or three dead children. We approach the entrance to the dam, but some guys with guns threaten to kill us. You know what they say, it's not who you know, it's who you know that lives at a hydroelectric dam. Joel's brother comes out and is like, what's up bestie slay? My bro and I catch up and I can't help but notice how little we care that we're both still alive. 99.9% .9 of the world has died and we're just having a casual family reunion like it's nothing special. Anyway, these guys have horses, which is swell as contrary to popular belief, horses use absolutely no petroleum. I greet the steed the same way Middle Eastern men greet women in nightclubs. We head to the sleeping quarters and I'm quite alarmed to see this guy not waking up when I shine a bright torch into his face. It's a zombie apocalypse, maybe learn to sleep a little lighter. My guy is taking four tamazapans and then punching a couple of cones before lights out. My brother then gives me a picture of my daughter, which might be the cutest gesture I've ever seen in my life. Joel is like, keep your picture, you filthy mutt dog. Joel clearly has some unresolved issues. I give this dog a pat and then watch as the boys fix the machinery. To everybody's disbelief, the lights come on and just like that, this small lame community has power. This achievement would mean so much more if we hadn't just arrived five minutes ago. The dam is then attacked by some angry hunters who also clearly have a vested interest in hydroelectric power, which I professionally respect. I do, however, kill all of them because they might hurt Ellie and her safety and well-being is the most important thing in the world. Joel proceeds to aggressively console her for some reason and then she angrily rides off into the woods on a horse. Menopause is crazy. Of course we go after her, but I'm thinking it might be a good time to revisit the damn security protocol. A dozen hunters just wandered in the front door and then a 14 year old child escaped on a thoroughbred. What is this, the Tijuana San Diego border after 11 p.m.? At least it gives Joel and his brother time to bond. I always thought horse riding was for tiny men and unattractive women from rich families, but in an apocalypse, it's a great way to see this truly captivating forbidden forest. Like the video if you want me to check out Hogwarts Legacy, I reckon that would be a great game for content. We reach a quaint little farmhouse and Ellie's horse is tied up in plain sight out the front. It looks like she's good at dressing for comfort and not being sneaky. I head inside and the place is nice. This family was living a top quality lifestyle. Flat screen TVs, ski trophies. They've got tea, coffee and sugar here. And then over here, even more tea, coffee and sugar. You know someone sipping on a cup of freshly brewed nepotism when they have this many hot beverage and condiment stations. I head upstairs to calm Ellie down. It looks like the last 20 years has given Joel time to grow as a person and become the kind, loving father figure Ellie needs him to be. It's pretty goddamn stupid. You are treading on some mighty thin ice here. And I sure as hell ain't your dad. Shockingly, more hunters rock up. It's almost as if tied up horses give away our position every single time. 
I murder them all with a bow and arrow, and then there's a horse riding montage. Very cool, I guess. We say goodbye to my brother, and then head for the University of Colorado so we can make this cure. I had a pretty good time at university in Australia. I studied accounting, which meant that I actually became a minority. In my first year tutorial, it was all Indians and Asians. We got put into group assignments, and it's me and these three Indian lads, and honestly, Indians have the craziest humour. One of my mates died, which is obviously very sad, and when I came back to study, my group gave me a box of tissues and a mug that had a picture of a small violin on it. They then changed my nickname in the group chat to One Dead Friend. They also got me an outstanding grade, so thank you Nish and the boys. We finally reached the science lab, but there's no scientists, just monkeys doing, I assume, cute little monkey experiments. It seems the scientists have relocated to a hospital in Salt Lake City. We were also followed here by savages. They rush our position, but I have a flamethrower now, so it's pretty unfair. This lad has a 2x4 and he's running right at me despite his friends still burning in front of him. Imagine surviving 20 years of an apocalypse to die because you ran unarmed at a guy with a flamethrower. That is the kind of confidence I aspire to have. I open a door, but there's a smart enemy hiding who tackles me down and a metal rod pierces my torso. Joel's a real baby about it. With death moments away, Ellie has to take point. Suddenly the young girl who we've been caring for is caring for us. It's a beautiful moment in the story as the balance shifts. Ellie guns down anyone who could be a threat. A troubled 14 year old shooting people in a school and for once it's beautiful. We ride out of the campus heroes, but then Joel falls off his horse and he's clinically dead now by the looks of it. The game then fades to black and it's all good now. Ellie nursed Joel back to health off camera. Now we're just hunting for some dinner. What do you mean a jagged metal rod went right through his torso and major arteries were punctured? He's chilling back at the cabin. We are now Ellie and our mission is to hunt a deer. Of course the human race needs saving, but it's important to get out of the city and take some time for yourself once in a while. A snow trip is a fantastic way to clear your head. I nail the deer a few times, but when I reach the kill, two guys appear, but they're pretty friendly. They offer some antibiotics in exchange for deer meat. This guy David and I hang for a while so his friend can get the meds, and dare I say we hit it off. We're attacked by a huge horde of infected, but we have each other's backs in a way Joel and Ellie never did. This is Call of Duty Zombies Wave 53, and Davo and I are cruising. I shoot clickers in the head while he pushes bookcases. If Ellie ever needs to rearrange the furniture in her bedroom, I know who I'm calling, and it's not Joel. The horde keeps chasing us, it's stressful. I then find a diamond in the rough. This guy is wearing a great sweater. Everyone needs a good sweater. It's then back to shooting things that used to be people in the face as they do literally anything to reach you. It's actually really nice to feel this wanted. And David and Ellie are making such a great team that if I were her, I'd cut Joel out of the equation. What kind of psychopath rejects a photo of his daughter? A big dog gives me the antibiotics and I ride back to Joel. He really isn't looking good, so I give him the sketchy antibiotics because needle sharing is hilarious. Ellie then realizes she's been tracked here. I guess she forgot about footprints in the snow, which seems like a massive oversight. We decide the best course of action is to lead the hunters away from the junkie via a horse chase. This part of the game seems like it belongs in a single player Call of Duty campaign. Ellie easily escapes because everyone knows a 14 year old girl can easily outmuscle a full grown man. My horse calls in sick and I have to continue on foot. I don't know why, but I decide to stop using stealth and instead just shoot everyone. I head glitch on containers, these guys weren't ready. The cool thing about playing as a female is I can go into the women's bathroom without being creepy. The great thing about being a redhead is I can even use the disabled stall. This lakeside resort is actually quite nice and I make my way through it murdering so many of David's men. Maybe he isn't the man we thought he was, but god damn does he make moving furniture look effortless. Speaking of Dave, he sneaks up and chokes Ellie out while softly whispering, I'm trying to help you, into her ear. Super comforting. He then puts Ellie in a cage and gives her a plate of hot food, which is a classy gesture. The meat may be that deer we hunted, or it may be human. David was unclear about that. We cut back over to Joel, who's finally waking up. Honestly, forgot he was even in the story. I'm immediately alarmed with the location Ellie has chosen for us to sleep. Every house is empty, but let's choose the one with a cellar that was almost certainly used for human trafficking. I walk out and Limpy starts screaming Ellie's name at the top of his lungs. Ellie! This immediately gives away our position. I truthfully don't know how these two have survived this long. Joel kills a bunch of people and then we're back with Ellie. We're swapping characters faster than I do when I'm throwing on Overwatch. Ellie's on a table and they're about to eat her, I think. She easily escapes David's grasp though. This man couldn't hold down a job, unless that job was a removalist. I run out into the blizzard and we're now 100% sure that David and his friends are cannibals. It sounds messed up, but can you blame them? I reckon if I got trapped in a broken lift for more than four hours, I'd start eyeing up whoever looked the tastiest. I'm a growing boy. 
I clamber into a restaurant where I should be safe, but just kidding, David's here and he's burning the building. And this is a boss fight and I'll admit it was scary. I think it's because we're playing as a child and if you step on glass, he hears you and chases you with a machete. Perhaps like Joel, I have some unresolved issues from my past. I guess we'll never know because I sneak up on Dave and choke him and then we both implausibly fall unconscious at the exact same time. And back to Joel and he's still a cripple but he stops shouting all the time so that's a big strategic improvement. I kill a few of David's men and then we find where they're keeping the merchandise. Really dark stuff but cannibalism would fix both the aging population problem and world hunger, just saying. I see the restaurant burning and Joel runs over. He arrives just as Ellie is brutally murdering David and he's like, chill Ellie, chill, you're safe now. You killed all the bad guys while I was at home shooting up H. I'm here, you're safe. The guy who's done nothing for several months is here to protect you. I guess we'll never know if David was a good guy or not. It's now spring and we've reached Salt Lake City where the hospital is. It's a beautiful day, the sunniest it's ever been during this entire game. Despite the optimistic mood, Ellie is still pretty upset about being taken prisoner by cannibals. Victim mentality. We head further into the city and can now actually see the hospital. And God forbid we take the sunny street so Ellie can stop looking so pasty. Apparently the only way there is through a sketchy underground bus station. I try and work with Ellie like we usually do, but she's still depressed. You know how the ancient idiom goes. The only way to cure PTSD is by spending some time with giraffes. Unfortunately, everyone knows giraffes can easily survive a zombie apocalypse. It's a touching moment in the story where Ellie gets to be a kid for a moment. Joel lets her enjoy the zoo experience and then breaks the news that we're going to have to kill and eat at least three of these gangly mammals for sustenance. The wholesome moments start stacking up as Ellie gives me a photo of my daughter. This time Joel doesn't let his emotions get the better of him and he accepts the gift. Thank God, she died 20 years ago, not this morning. The signs to the hospital lead us into an underground tunnel because dark scary tunnels are better for gameplay. Inside are loads of infected, but I have a secret weapon that these undead hordes aren't ready for and it's not Molotov cocktails. It's small ledges. The meta of any zombie game is small ledges. No wonder these guys couldn't kill giraffes. It's actually kind of embarrassing the apocalypse has gone on this long. I attempt to hunt some freshwater trout, but there's not even a hunting mechanic in this game, so instead Joel dives into filthy water despite having a recently healed huge open wound. I wish I could have the same hunger for life that Joel has for swimming in truly disgusting bodies of water. More carrying Ellie around on pallets. The current grows in intensity, and so we decide the best option is to cross over on a shaky bus. To absolutely no one's surprise, the bus dislodges and Joel is washed downstream. When both protagonists almost drown, it's really sad and hot. Joel attempts to give Ellie CPR, but then these soldiers who also love sewers show up and hit him with a gun in the back of the head. We awake several hours later in hospital, and we've done it. The doctors are sure they can find a cure using Ellie's natural antibodies, and all they have to do is dissect her brain and kill her. Win-win. Joel doesn't feel the same, however, and he kills the guards and prepares to go on a hospital rampage. We've spent literal years crossing the nation. Joel died for a while, and Ellie almost got eaten by a man named Dave. Despite this, Joel decides, screw the cure and the human race, I'm going to save this one girl who can't even swim. I sneak through the hospital as they send soldiers out everywhere. It's hard to know if Joel is doing the right thing or not. I mean, he's passing up the opportunity to save humanity and tens of thousands of lives, giving our race the rare opportunity to rebuild a society where everyone works together in unison, pulling their assets together for the greater good. Basically communism. Communism always works out well for the common man, just look at history. I enter the operating theatre and the surgeon's silhouettes are haunting. I walk inside and all of the medical personnel clearly reach for weapons and give me no choice but to rinse them with an assault rifle. How dare these sick twisted doctors try and help everyone. I pick up Ellie and run for the exit. Bullets fly in every direction, but silver lining, the interior designing of the pediatric ward is tasteful. They've got rainbows, trees and other fascinating vistas painted on the wall. What a great vibe. I head downstairs and Marlene is here. And Joel's known her since the first half of the game and she pleads with him to see the light. Honestly, I'm team Marlene, but Joel just shoots her in cold blood. One of his oldest friends. At least he's good at handling grief. It only took him 20 years to get over his daughter. We drive out of the city and Smackhead finally wakes up from her pharmaceutical binge. She's like, hey, what happened? Why aren't we in a hospital? And Joel's just like, shh, let's go on a hike. Nothing like a hike to clear your head after you kill a bunch of well-meaning civilians and then lie about it to your travel companion and last living friend. We reach the place where Tommy is, where we can peacefully live out our lives. This has to be one of the coolest and most unexpected endings to a game I've ever seen. Like the video if you enjoyed it, join the Discord if you want to chat, link in description, I love you.